Hey, what's going on, guys? Kyle Mazza here. This is going to be my patch 9.2 Affliction Warlock DPS guide. In it, we're going to be covering talents, single target, AoE, rotations, covenants, conduits, soul binds, legendaries, tier gear, what changes with tier gear, uh, basically everything you can think of for Affliction Warlock heading into patch 9.2 and Sepulchre are the first ones. Now, if you guys see any weak auras or profiles or add ons you'd like to acquire from this video, they are all indeed available to you guys for free on my Twitch. If you want to swing by, hang out, grab them, ask any questions anytime. Feel free to do so. And before we get into it, I also want to give one huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys a million times for all support. Really appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting, there should be a link somewhere up here as well as down in the video description below. So that being said, let's get right into it. Starting off with Affliction's new tier bonuses in Sepulcher. So Affliction's two-piece bonus says Malefic Rapture's damage is increased by 15% and each cast of Malefic Rapture increases the duration of corruption agony and unstable affliction by two seconds now off the bat unstable affliction is our dot that's limited to one you can't have multiple unstable afflictions active at a time you can however have multiple corruptions and multiple agonies active so this bonus is relevant in single targets in council base settings and heavy aoe cleave base settings basically wherever you have corruption and agony active in that you know one unstable affliction iteration now if you opt to play the absolute corruption talent it makes your corruption permanent so in early iterations of this bonus you really didn't get any benefit from playing ac absolute corruption versus because you, you, you really weren't getting the extension right but the cool thing is blizzard added a clause to this which is not mentioned in the tier set here that if you're playing absolute corruption the talent whenever you cast rapture it essentially gives you a free tick of corruption on every target that has you know it applied to it while playing the absolute corruption talent so that's pretty cool now the four piece says while agony corruption and unstable affliction are active your drain soul has a 10 percent chance to make your next malefic rapture cost no soul shards and be instant cast now if you're playing nightfall or inevitable minus a talent which gives you shadow as your filler instead of drain soul it has a 20 percent chance per cast to make your next rapture cost no shards and be instant so there's synergy between the four piece here and the two piece because you know free rapture procs extend your dots more the baseline amount of rapture damage has been increased you know by 15 percent with the two piece so there's a lot of synergy here um now there are certain legendaries like malefic wrath which we'll get into in a little bit here as well that benefit even more from this two piece four piece the one i guess i would say potential issue that you might run into when it comes to 9.2 and sow the seeds heavy aoe base settings is that for the most part, those settings are where your Malefic Rapture is devalued a bit. You're typically casting Seed of Corruption as your Soul Shard Spender. So without a clause being added onto this that says, hey, you get a free Rapture proc or Seed of Corruption proc, it might be a bit lacking in certain settings, but it still at the same time can provide uh, relevant dot extensions and potentially powerful, you know, cleave, uh, cleave value as well, depending on the fight. If you, if you can get actual procs, channeling your Drain Soul or casting multiple Shadow Bolts while those dots are being extended. So getting into single target talents for Affliction Warlock in patch 9.2, not a whole lot's actually changed from patch 9.1. In the 15 row here, your only real option is going to be Drain Soul. Uh, the potential shard sniping value you can get on fights if there are adds present and dying every once in a while is very relevant. It turns into more Malefic Rapture cast, which is more damage. And the actual 100% damage increase when a target is below 20% health is sort of relevant if you're playing Night Fae. It's much more relevant if you're playing Necrolord, uh, spoilers ahead, Covenant-wise. We'll get to that in a little while here. 15 row, Drain Soul is pretty much just where you want to be. 25 row, we have Siphon Life as your single target option here, and really the only option you have in this row for single target. It is number one, another actual dot, which more raw dots on your target give more value to Malefic Wrath, gives more value to Withering Bolt, the conduit you're going to play for Affliction and single target, and the actual dot itself makes up a decent portion of your overall damage it's just the best single target option that we actually have in this row the 30 row the options are dark pact or burning rush essentially here and similar to other videos and things you've mentioned dark pact is just so incredibly strong it's been buffed a handful of times over the course of i guess Sh shadowlands and it's just gotten more and more powerful every single time if there is a fight where you need mobility burning rush can be selected but over the course of all of Sanctum of Domination Prog, realistically, you play Dark Pact in every fight and didn't really need Burning Rush. You can make things work like Windrush, Totems, Roars, and have that extra just large Dark Pact shield on a pretty short cooldown being one minute if need be. 
35 row our only option here in single target is phantom singularity a 45 second cooldown that does not cost a shard unlike vile taint which does albeit half the cooldown phantom singularity does more damage and once again is an additional dot effect on your target so when you're popping cooldowns you have an extra dot up in phantom singularity so you dump your raptures during that window for more actual raw rapture damage more damage when ps is ticking ps being phantom singularity it's just your best option across the board when it comes to single target base settings for af in the 40 row here uh mortal coil is going to be your only real option when it comes to single target and raid based encounters in my opinion the 45 second cooldown that brings with it a 20 percent heal and even the end cap can be relevant to times is very very strong it's sort of like your backup health pot health stone if need be on a pretty short cooldown the 45 row here we have shadows embrace or haunt uh grimoire of sacrifice is not even an option here haunt is going to be your best single target de facto talent in this row a 15 second cooldown having it applied to the target does a small amount of shadow damage but also increases the damage the target takes by 10 percent for 18 seconds now if the target dies where the haunt is applied you actually get the haunt cooldown reset uh it's a bit buggy at times but the mo for the most part you basically see only haunt played in pretty much every single target setting as affliction in the 50 row we have only one real option here and that is dark soul misery two minute cooldown infuses your soul with the misery of fallen foes increasing haste by 30 percent for 20 seconds pairing this with a ruby trinket if you have it or another two minute base trinket and your other main cooldown being dark glare getting dot extensions with a haste amp is incredibly strong and it is the only realistically uh, real option that af has in the 50 row for single target so when it comes to AOE or council slash cleave based talents for affliction, things do get a little different in the 25 row and 35 row. But one thing that that does stay the same is the fact that drain soul is the best option in the first row being 15 and it's still not very close. Drain soul good in single target. And also if you're factoring in different mobs dying in mythic plus or certain fights in a raid, for example, having the ability to cast drain soul on them, get a soul shard and then turn that into a rapture cast is very strong and a substantial dps increase the 25 row though so siphon life is your best option when it comes to single target stuff however that changes in mythic plus or aoe or council based settings right in agony absolute corruption and siphon life all have value so typically you've seen we've seen right in agony paired with sow the seeds when it comes to 9.1 being the de facto pretty much go to mythic plus build for affliction you bring a lot of on-demand burst aoe playing the night fey covenant legendary decaying soul satchel and without playing siphon life there's not only a reason to because you're not casting malefic rapture as your shard spender it's seed of corruption now which is being buffed by so the seeds now we've also seen a bit of play with absolute corruption in certain settings some sort of niche builds of affliction and plus playing vile taint which we'll get to in a second tier but it's typically seen more in a raid setting with three targets or so or like multiple ads or mini bosses or things around the room where you want to put corruption on sort of have the ability to kind of set it and forget it it sort of depends on the fight correct a good example is prototype pantheon actually in the upcoming raid and at the very end of the fight there are four permanent targets which absolute corruption is just very 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 good on he gets more more time for drain soul cast which once again proc your four piece other dot refreshes filler spells rapture cast whatever what have you however siphon life is sort of a middle ground between both of them so a good example of where siphon life is actually decent in two target based settings is castle nathria with huntsman altimore we played siphon life on that fight and for the most part it wasn't even that hard to maintain three dots being agony corruption siphon life and unstable affliction on one of the two targets for the duration of that fight keep in mind now that your two piece for affliction also extends dots by a pretty substantial bit whenever you cast rapture siphon life looks even better when it comes to these two target cleave base encounters if there's going to be any or if you're in that spot because all you have to really, really refresh is siphon life and cast your raptures and cast your drain souls so every single talent does have its own uses in different settings 30 row here dark pack once again i think it's just your best option a strong shield any one minute cooldown is just hard to pass up if you do need, need the mobility once again burning rush is fine but i think dark pack is just overall the best option in this row once again on a very very short cooldown so 35 row so the seeds phantom singularity and vile taint sort of similar to the 25 row they all have their own uses in different settings 
So the seeds, once again, was paired with Writhe and Agony over the majority of 9.1, giving Aff a very strong on-demand AoE burst profile in Mythic Plus on certain fights like Kel'Thuzad, um, Solar and the Dormazane, for example. You typically see it paired with Writhe and Agony and not Absolute Corruption. Number one, because you get more dot value out of Writhe, and I guess number two, sort of, because uh, seed, seed of Corruption applies Corruption whenever you cast it, and that becomes your main Soul Shard Spender, so there's not really a point in playing Absolute Corruption because it's sort of like redundant. You're applying Corruption anyways multiple times, so Writhe and Agony paired with Seed typically gave you more value. Now, if you're looking to play more of a single target base build, we already mentioned Phantom Singularity being a good option. If you're looking at another option in this row, though, that is Vile Taint. Vile Taint typically shifts you away from the Seed of Corruption mass spam build and puts you more in a Malefic Rapture build, which, once again, are two-piece increases the damage of by a baseline amount, being 15%. Now, if you're playing that build, you typically see Vile Taint paired with Absolute Corruption. You're more of a consistent cast my Seed of Corruption. It explodes, spreads corruptions, they're all permanent, sort of set it and forget it. And then you can cast your Vile Taint, which is on a 20 second cooldown, basically on cooldown, and get extra Rapture value, extra Dot value, it gets certain extra value paired with different legendaries. So there are definitely builds of Aff that are customizable, depending on what you're actually doing heading into 9.2, with both the 35 row and 25 row having most of that customization mixed in those two. The 40 row talent wise, we have Dark Fury and Mortal Coil as your only real options, I feel like, when it comes to Mythic Plus. Uh, Coil is just still exceptionally strong on a 45 second cooldown, giving you a 20% heal and the end cap if need be to either, you know, kick a mob that's unkickable or one you have a kick for in general. Just a very, very strong ability overall. If you need the extra cooldown reduction on Shadow Fury for whatever reason, Dark Fury can be an option, but I just do still feel personally that Coil gets the nod here in basically the vast majority of settings. 45 row, you have Shadows Embrace and Haunt as your realistic options here. Haunt is still your better single target priority funnel damage based ability, which you see made decent use of use of a Mythic Plus on priority mobs or mini bosses, things like that. Shadows Embrace does have some potential when it comes to like two target based encounters like Prototype Pantheon and Sepulchre, for example, because they increase the duration from 12 seconds to 16 seconds in 9.1, which if you're playing Drain Soul or even Shadow Ball as your filler, it's not very hard to stack this to three stacks on both targets and then cast a Drain Soul on one or the other basically once every 16 seconds to maintain the actual effect. Now it stacks to 9% damage taken increase, not 10% like Haunt does, but if you can have 9% damage taken additionally on two targets versus 10 and zero with Haunt, I think it sort of makes sense, right? It's been this way for a while and there really hasn't been, hasn't been a whole lot of fights where it's been applicable. There could be a few in Sepulchre, so it's worth keeping an eye on, but Haunt is still the better priority funnel focus option here in the 45 row. The 50 row, just like for single target, Dark Soul Misery is your only option. Two minute cooldown, massive haste increase for 20 seconds. Paired with Dark Lair makes it even better, other on use trinkets, whatever what have you. It makes Affliction's damage profile much, much better having two minute Dark Lair, two minute Dark Soul, two minute trinket, which we'll get to rotationally in a bit here. Just a very, very, very strong option in this final row. Also in a world of creeping death and soul conduit, just not being very good as a whole, talent wise. So when it comes to Affliction Warlock legendaries in patch 9.2, we're sort of in a weird spot. And that's because for the most part, we've played Night Fae in basically every setting up until now, which meant that in Mythic Plus, we've played the Night Fae Covenant legendary called the Decaying Soul Satchel. And that's been, you know, our one legendary of choice in basically any kind of two target plus setting. But we're getting that baseline if you choose to play Night Fae, spoilers ahead, uh, this coming patch. So you have options uh, in the other, you know, just general affliction based legendary. So I want to talk a bit about those. Now, Malefic Wrath is going to be your single target base legendary still, just like how it is in 9.1. It says Malefic Rapture increases the damage of your Shadow Bolt or Drain Soul by 35% for 10 seconds, stacking up to three times. So this is going to be more or less a maintenance buff that you want to maintain in single target. You play Drain Soul in single target, so there's no Shadow Bolt you know, clause there. It's Drain Soul. And you're going, for the most part, to just want to maintain this in single target over the entire course of the fight. Now, rotationally, it can change a bit if you're playing Night Fae or spoilers, Necrolord. We'll get into that in a little bit here. But with the Affliction 2 piece now extending dots 
and the four piece giving you free rapture procs free rapture procs is free malefic wrath maintenance extensions and refreshes it makes this legendary easier better not as much of a headache to play with in single target and it is your single target choice uh hands down not even close so there are two other options here the next one being relic of demonic synergy this is going to be like your throwback from castle nathria we played this a while ago in 9.0 Damage done by you or your primary demon has a 15% has a chance, I'm sorry, to grant your other one 15% increased damage for 15 seconds. So at times, you know, if I do damage and proc it, my pet will get the increase. If my pet does damage and procs it, I'll get the increase. At times, you can both have it, depending what happens. So there is RNG to this legendary. However, it can be deceptively strong in the right settings mainly being your council base settings like prototype pantheon the two target settings the three target sustained damage settings where you can get this proc because a 15 percent damage increase on you and in three target settings with you know dot cleave is going to be very strong i played this with a covenant based legendary on the pantheon fight in sepulcher and it was very very impressive now this is probably going to be i feel like your middle ground go between malefic wrath and uh spoilers wrath of consumption legendary effect depending on if mobs are dying or things like that it's a solid all around good middle ground choice not as good as malefic wrath and single target and not as good as wrath of consumption which we're going to talk about right now in settings where things are dying on a consistent basis so wrath of consumption is the third legendary that i want to mention it's an interesting one so corruption and agony each and the keyword here is each grant an application of wrath of consumption when a target dies increasing all periodic damage so dot damage which by the way does include drain soul for by six percent for 30 seconds stacking up to five times so that when they stack to five is a 30 percent damage amp for 30 seconds now the keyword here is each so let's say for example i put agony on one mob and it dies i will get one stack if that mob has agony and corruption on it i will get two stacks so it's actually very easy to stack this effect and when it stacks as long as you kill a mob within half a minute it will chain the full effect and refresh at five stacks so this legendary could be very strong when it comes to mythic plus based settings when paired with you know if you're playing night fey decaying soul satchel uh it, it has a lot of potential now the one sort of downfall to this legendary is that if you're playing you so the seeds city so corruption spam build it does not affect so like cedar corruption explosion damage it'll still increase your agony damage and your corruption damage but most of your baseline damage is dealt through cedar corruption and those large on-demand burst profiles uh it's sort of a similar case with malefic rapture however but typically if you're playing malefic rapture as your shard spender and not so the seeds you're playing like a vile taint build which gives you vile taint which is another option for a mass aoe kind of base dot which gets more value out of wrath of consumption so there's some give and take with this legendary it's a bit better in certain keys like halls of atonement or necrotic wake comparatively to like a theater of pain or maybe a spires of ascension on certain poles more mob dense dungeons where you're making these large poles faster and faster but it could be an exceptionally strong legendary on a handful of fights in the raid lehu vim for example prototype pantheon potentially and just other encounters and settings where ads are dying quickly over the course of time so malefic wrath best single target synergy a solid middle ground and wrath consumption gaining some serious value this patch could be solid mythic plus could be solid on a handful of fights so when it comes to covenant choices for affliction warlock and patch 9.2 your only real options are going to be night fey and necrolord and they are very different in what their covenant based legendaries do for you so if you opt to go the night fey route your covenant legendary is going to be called decaying soul satchel and it says each target affected by your soul rot which has a max target cap of four increases your haste and crit strike chance by five percent for eight seconds so if you hit one target it's five two is ten percent three fifteen 420 basic math however the haste is multiplicative so if you have the haste effect on four targets plus you pop your dark soul misery and or get a power infusion or some kind of haste based effect like bloodlust or heroism the amount of haste you can get with this legendary is very 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 strong and this is where a lot of afflictions heavy burst come from in mythic plus playing so the seeds build or even in raiding if you can stack multiple targets together this is where you see affliction do that big big burst damage on certain fights now in single target this legendary is not as powerful as the necrolur one however and the actual crit strike chance rating is additive not multiplicative here if you're looking for more of a single target based legendary necrolord has shard of annihilation 
and it says that Smitting Bolt, which is the Necrolord 45 second cooldown ability, also increases the critical effect chance by 100% of Drain Soul for one Drain Soul channel, or if you're playing Night Fey or Inevitable Demise, it'll be Shadow Bolt, but it'll be three Shadow Bolts. And it also increases the crit strike damage by 50% for whatever ability it affects. So this, when paired with Malefic Wrath, the single target affliction Warlock Legendary, when paired with the target being below 20% health, which also increases just Drain Soul's baseline damage by 100% there, when also paired with Withering Bolt and other Drain Soul based damage uh, stacking effects, means that your Drain Souls can hit exceptionally hard playing Necrolord with Shard of Annihilation. The main difference here being there's no kind of two target, three target, four target, you know, applicability like Night Fae. So, depending what you're looking for, more single target, Necrolord could be your answer. If you're looking for more of a balanced two target kind of cleave base setting or Mythic Plus, Night Fae certainly will get the nod over Necrolord. If you opt to play Night Fae as your covenant of choice in patch 9.2 for Affliction, Dreamweaver is going to be the best Soulbind choice you have in basically every setting for Affliction. She has a couple of relevant abilities, one being the Field of Blossoms effect, which you gain relatively early on in her tree. It says Soul Rot puts flowers at your, at your feet for 12 seconds that increase your haste by 15% when you stand in them. Now keep in mind, you're playing Night Fae. We already talked about legendary effects, decaying soul satchel, the multiplicative haste stacking. So right off the bat, if you're in a two, three, four target setting, even a single target setting, you get that Field of Blossoms effect plus decaying soul satchel effect whenever you pop your soul rot, it's already multiplicative haste stacking. And if you pair it with power infusions or bloodlust or dark soul misery, you get a very, very large amount of haste, which puts Dreamweaver ahead of the other soul binds by a pretty substantial amount. Now, on top of that, her final ability is called Dream Delver, which says dealing damage basically gives a stacking damage effect of 1% that stacks to stacks three times. So it's a permanent 3% damage effect on whatever target you're hitting, and it does indeed refresh every time a dot ticks. So pretty much if you hit a target that's not going to die in two seconds, you maintain a permanent 3% damage increase on that target. The, the main power from Dreamweaver does indeed lie in the Field of Blossoms ability. There are certain mechanics that might push you out of the field at times, but she is still a good margin ahead of both Nia and Karain, which are the other Night Fae Soulbinds. So if you opt to play Necrolord as your 9.2 Affliction Covenant of choice, which I will say Necrolord is currently simming with the legendaries and things in single target, about a thousand DPS higher than Night Fae, albeit Night Fae has the AoE applications and, you know, soul shape. Uh, there are two soul binds which you, you know, have the option of playing realistically. The first one here is Plague Divisor Merileth, and that's mainly due to his final ability called Kevin's Oozling. Whenever you cast Decimating Bolt, which is a 45 second cooldown, you summon an Oozling named Kevin that attacks your enemies for 15 seconds. He makes them also take 6% additional damage from you, which is pretty strong when paired with Estimating Bolt and Drain Soul and Malefic Wrath, all these huge Drain Soul damage based effects. And even outside of those big effects, just a 6% damage increase every 45 seconds is pretty strong. Now, if you want to play a different Soul Bind, Bonesmith Hermier is actually a very close second and at times I've even seen Sims favoring Bonesmith a bit over Plague Divisor and that is mainly due to the actual Marrowed Gemstones ability. After landing 10 critical strikes, after landing 10 critical strikes, you gain 18% increased critical or chance to critical strike for 10 seconds. This may only occur once every minute, but I've seen Sims where both these soul binds are very close to one another. Now, I would say Bones with this have a bit more AOE implications is potentially depending on, hey, a, a un, uncapped, I guess, 18% increased crit chance if you're in like a heavy AOE setting. That's going to be a little more relevant than, you know, Kevin's Oozling hitting one target, maybe target swapping and hitting two targets. But either way, Necrolord is more or less based around that single target shard of Annihilation damage profile with big drain souls and things like that. The cool thing is that all the soul binds are pretty awesome. And hey, I'm down to play Necrolord. It's been uh, my favorite covenant of choice for a while now. But in the end, you know, Night Bay also looks pretty tempting and I don't really want to leave behind uh, Soul Shape. So when it comes to conduits for Affliction Warlock, if you're looking at a single target base setting, you're going to play Withering Bolt as your first one and focus malignancy as your second one and that's just mainly because those are the two best single target set it and forget it conduits we have across both night fey and necrolord now when it comes to the third potency conduit and single target you typically opt to play soul eater if you're night fey which is the night fey 
covenant based conduit and if you're necrolord you opt to play fatal decimation which is the necrolord covenant based conduit just based around the raw damage that they actually deal and for the most part that's what you play in basically every single target kind of setting now if you're in mythic plus or some kind of like council based area where you have multiple targets you're going to have agony rolling on for a bit of time you typically see people choose the rolling agony conduit over focus malignancy because number one withering bolt is your best single target conduit malignancy is not bad but withering bolt is better so you have that then you pair it with either soul eater or a uh, fatal decimation for night fair and for lord covenant wise and rolling agony over focus malignancy the actual duration increase to agony that it brings is pretty substantial and that's not factoring in the extra pandemic range time you get to refresh your agonies it almost makes them permanent with the actual affliction two piece in 9.2 it's a very very strong effect in these council heavy ab base cleave kind of settings so if you're playing night fey and looking at doing the malefic wrath single target opener for affliction it's actually pretty similar to the spoilers ahead necro lord opener in rotation you'll want to start by precasting your haunt about three seconds before the boss is pulled because it has travel time and once you finish that cast you'll precast unstable affliction they'll both hit the boss on pull then you go agony corruption siphon life phantom singularity dark soul misery it's important the dark soul here after the singularity before the soul rot cast cast your soul rot trinkets racial intellect pots then summon dark lair it's important to note if you're playing a ruby a soul letting ruby you want to pop it a bit earlier typically i pop it around my agony application time because of the travel time on the ruby effect once you pop your dark lair you want to cast malefic rapture three times to stack your malefic wrath buff to you know three stacks which is the full value and then you just drain soul while maintaining the actual malefic rapture malefic wrath buff via casting malefic rapture now depending on tier procs from the four piece if you're if you're playing your four piece it makes it a bit easier to maintain the overall malefic wrath buff you want to make sure that you refresh it when it's at a lower duration if possible to you know min max the amount of shards you have available to you because when you acquire your four piece there's a very distinct chance a very realistic chance or likely chance that you'll be able to actually maintain the malefic wrath buff for the entire duration of the fight for the most part however night fey works in an interesting manner you have soul rot you have phantom singularity with this spec necrolord does not have soul rot as a dot based effect it has just many bolt which empowers drain soul it doesn't give you a dot based effect so night fey once still wants to get that relevant rapture value every minute because once again soul rot is a dot based effect so you'll want to try and maintain your malefic wrath stacks on your legendary as long as possible and at about the 50 ish second mark you want to sort of check and see okay am i hurting on shards do i have a few left what can i do here because whenever you reapply your soul rot every minute you'll want to hold your phantom singularity for that as well so you have these big one minute rapture windows while also maintaining malefic wrath so it's a bit of give and take there you have to play with the amount of shards and you get refunds you get if you're sniping shards from as dying for whatever reason in a single target setting it can change that once again when you acquire the actual four piece things theoretically get much easier with having you know uh two piece dots dot extensions and then four piece free rapture procs it, it makes the normal malefic wrath maintenance rotation pretty trivial for the most part and you will have these every one minute burst windows with malefic rapture whether you, whether you have your dark lair every two minutes with your dark soul or you have that minute after just soul rot and holding phantom singularity for it it still gives night fey malefic wrath affliction these unique interesting smaller one minute damage burst windows while also giving you that very relevant drain soul value in single target if you've chosen to play nephrolord as your covenant of choice for affliction warlock and are looking at the malefic wrath shard of annihilation single target build it's pretty similar to night fey but a bit different as well at certain points you'll still want to precast your haunt at three seconds before the boss is pulled precast unstable affliction they hit when the boss is pulled once they pull agony typically i pop my ruby about here give or take corruption then siphon life phantom singularity and then you'll want to cast your decimating bolt after the phantom singularity then pop your dark soul pop other trinkets racial intellect potions summon your dark lair and after the dark lair it's very important just like night fey but even more important with necrolord to cast three malefic raptures and then cast the drain soul because you want malefic wrath the buff up for that drain soul which is also empowered by decimating bolt by shard of annihilation by other drain soul based effects it's also very very important to not interrupt the decimating bolt drain soul cast over the entire course of the fight if at all possible 
because that is where the vast majority of her damage comes from playing this build is drain soul and that damage is dealt evenly over all the periodic ticks in that drain soul channel so if you get half the channel off and you know have to move if you have to it is what it is but if you don't have to and you just move for whatever reason or cancel the cast you're losing half of that damage amp which is you know once again where all of your damage is actually at playing this necro lord build it's basically just single target base now with necro lord unlike night fey there really is not any kind of like one minute smaller damage rapture windows you don't like try and pull a few shards and rapture a bit here when you have more dots up because you're not playing soul rot you're playing decimating bolt which is not a dot based effect so you're going to try and maintain the malefic wrath legendary effect for the entire duration of the fight now unlike night fey as well where you hold your phantom singularity for your soul rot timer being one minute as necro lord you pop your phantom singularity and your decimating bolt on cooldown which means essentially okay well it's about on pull then the 45 second mark give or take then about 130 and then you're at this weird point where you have dark glare at two minutes but you don't have your singularity and you don't have your decimating bolt so you push your dark glare to about the 220 225 ish mark while also pushing your dark soul back to about that mark and then you pop your dark glare after you pop your 220 phantom singularity your 220 decimating bolt and then go from there now in the long run i mean you are having to wait 20 ish seconds on your dark glare and your dark soul but in the end it's certainly worth it getting that singularity extension even not being a huge rapture based class getting the dot extension getting more raptures covered by the actual singularity effect getting that big drain soul buff there with the haste effect and these things like that it's very very strong and it's worth the 20 ish second pushback and besides that it's normal maintenance buff you maintain malefic wrath as much as possible rapture when you can two piece and four piece help with you know gcds and do other things to cast other raptures whatever what have you and that's basically the gist of neck for a lord affliction and single target if you're playing night fey in mythic plus as affliction warlock which once again night fey has a much more applicable a much better aoe burst profile with the king soul Satchel legendary your aoe opener will look something like this so if the tank is running into the pack and you have the chance or the opportunity to cast or precast seed of corruption you'll want to do so if you can also precast unstable affliction on a mob you'll want to do so if possible if not you precast your seed apply agony to a handful of targets Typically, I pop my Dark Soul around this point and my Ruby. I can cast Haunt and UA on a target, which at that point, the Seed of Corruption should be popped. Then you can cast your Soul Rot, which once again applies the decaying Soul Satchel Night Fate Legendary effect. Drops Field of Blossoms from Dreamweaver. Dark Lair, Intellect Pots, Trinkets if it's not a Ruby. And you just spam Seed of Corruption if you're playing the so the Seeds build. This is the so the Seeds, Seed of Corruption as your main spender effect kind of build, which is what we've seen for the majority of 9.1 mythic plus based affliction now like i mentioned a little bit ago this build brings a lot of heavy aoe burst damage but it is lacking a very good bit as well in the single target department now the cool thing with this build though is you have soul rot on a one minute cooldown which means essentially you can just have this aoe you know profile albeit not with dark soul and without and with dark lair every every minute but you have that soul rot haste amp every single minute so for the most part Barring the key not being incredibly low or way too high, you should have that soul rot damage amp basically every single pack, which allows for more seed spam, higher seed crit chance, and this is what makes Affliction Warlock, or what has made Affliction Warlock, one of the better burst AOE based classes in Mythic Plus. Now, if you opted to play the Malefic Rapture version of Affliction in Mythic Plus for whatever reason, which is typically playing either Phantom Singularity or I would assume heading in the 9.2 with Wrath of Consumption Legendary, probably playing vile taint the opener is still similar but it's different obviously in where you spend your shards and you also have vile taint to account for so once again if you can you want to try and precast the corruption with the tank is running in if you can also precast unstable affliction great if not just forego that cast your seed apply agony to, to a handful of targets depending on how many you have typically i pop my dark soul about this point pop my soul letting ruby if i have it on cast my haunt and ua if i haven't and then at this point i cast my vile taint here now vile taint has a 10 second duration after that i will cast my soul rot which has an eight second duration you still playing night fey still have the large decaying soul Angel, feel the blossoms haste amp crit amp here uh trinkets if you haven't popped them racials intellect potions dark glare and at this point the dark glare will extend all your dots extending vile taint and soul rot you can then spam malefic rapture here in place of seed of corruption because you're not playing so the seeds now keep in mind vile taint 
also has a very short cooldown being 20 seconds which is worth casting on cooldown even outside of playing at larger stacks of Wrath of Consumption due to just how strong it is in these heavy AoE based scenarios. So this build is more of the Maleth Rapture Spender build. It has a very high amount of potential burst as well. If you're in like a five, six target setting, theoretically it has a higher burst profile and higher in higher number pulls as well. But the thing is at a certain point, I'm not, I can't just run into a pack and start spamming seed with a, with, with a soul rock cast and you feel the blossoms down any of that big haste amp, right? I'm having a bit more time to cast my, you know, my couple of agonies, my UA, my haunt, but then like, instead of just putting down a soul rot and spamming C, I have to go soul rot, vial taint, get my dark lair out, and then the rapture. So it's a tiny bit more setup time, and you are punished a bit more if you're not able to apply agony to all the mobs. Comparatively to seed, which doesn't really care about, okay, he has two agonies, agonies up on seven mobs, it's not a big deal. But rapture cares about dot count, which is sort of one of the negatives to this build, but on the other end of the spectrum, it is a bit better when it comes to single target. Once again, it's still not incredible. And even playing the pure single target build of Affliction, AF is still not great at single target. But you are playing Vile Taint, which does count as another dot for Malefic Rapture in single target. So there's a bit of give and take here. And once again, the Affliction 2 piece buffs Rapture. It doesn't buff C damage. So it's sort of a wait and see kind of game here. I think both builds have relevancy, have merit, and in the end, you might just see both being played in plus if you're playing Affliction, depending on the actual key and how heavy the AoE is, or if it's tyrannical or fortified. If you're looking at a certain pet to play in 9.2, the Imp is has typically been the de facto go-to pet when it comes to raiding. Each pet has its own unique ability as far as utility is concerned. The Imp is a ranged caster. So, for example, instead of using the Fell Hunter, we use the Imp typically in most raid and, you know, PvE-based settings because the Imp can change targets at range. If I tell it to hit one target and I tell it to hit the other, it can just turn and cast, you know, without running between one and the other. It also brings an ability called Singe Magic, which is a dispel. It's been used a decent bit of times in higher end, you know, just in, in raid progression, even when it comes to Mythic Plus. Now, the Fell Hunter, on the other hand, is a melee-based mob. So if I tell it to attack one target, it here and have it run you know 10 yards that way there's travel time between that so it's not it doesn't have the same uptime as the imp necessarily would when it comes to range damage the fell hunter however has an interrupt with it which is very very strong in mythic plus and at times in raid settings because you can tell the fell hunter to move across the room essentially afk but you can have it kick a mob or interrupt the mob way across the room thus allowing a different raid member to stay in and attack you know a different part of the boss without losing any kind of real relevant downtime because in the end hey a pet kicking it's better than you having somebody else run away across the room right the fell hunter also brings a devour magic effect which is a purge which can be useful at times mythic plus and things like that now the void walker is your tank pet which we really don't see used very often when it comes to pve based settings like in mythic plus or raiding it does have a taunt on it. So it has been used at times to taunt, taunt a boss off a tank, to take a debuff, a big rend or whatever, and then just summon it again, and it will do it again. I believe SLG was a great example of that. Outside of that, it's really only used when it comes to like solo content if you need a tank pet. The final pet, which is very interesting, is the Succubus or Incubus. This pet has not really been used in any kind of relevant PvE-based setting until now. Blizzard has changed its ability. It's called Whiplash, which it increases the actual damage taken by the Succubus or Incubus by 1%, but it stacks 10 times on a six second cooldown. So after a minute, as long as you're hitting the same target, the Succubus or Incubus you have out will essentially be doing 10% more damage than the Voidwalker or the Fell Hunter or the Imp would be. Now, pet damage is normalized. So outside the Succubus having this new change, the Imp the Voidwalker, the Fell Hunter, and previously the old Succubus will all do the same damage in combat. But this is interesting because this buff is a six second cooldown. So it takes an actual minute, you know, to maintain or to stack it to 10 stacks. But when you do, the Succubus is doing 10% more damage to that actual target. Now, if it's a fight where there's a lot of target swapping, a heavy ad based fight, this is a melee based pet. So it does have to run between targets depending what you're telling it to hit. And at the same time, you have to maintain that whiplash buff. But if you're in a single target based encounter or you're hitting one target for pretty much the entire fight, the succubus or incubus, as long as the whiplash debuff doesn't drop, will essentially do 10% more damage to that actual target. But if not, and you can't maintain it, the imp is probably your best choice if you don't need a kick in the fell hunter.
So yeah, thanks for watching guys. That about wraps it up for the 9.2 Affliction Warlock DPS guide. Now, just to clarify, like I said, Necrolord Malefic Wrath Affliction with double legendaries is ahead of Night Fae Affliction with Malefic Wrath. By about a thousand DPS give or take, it has a very, very strong single target execute based profile. And even the damage outside of execute is not terrible. But once again, Night Fae has that two target, three target, four target scaling that for the most part, is what we've seen Affliction be good at over the course of the expansion. Because in the end, if you want to play single target, you might as well just play Demonology. I hate to say it, unless you're playing Affliction just as an Affliction, you know, main, which is totally fine. Uh, Demonology just does better single target. But once again, if you are looking for that heavy execute damage based profile, Necrolord could potentially be your best bet. You also do lose Soul Shape, which is something in itself, but we'll see where it goes. Depending on the final few fights this tier in Sepulchre, It'd be pretty cool to see some Necrolord Affliction play. I wouldn't necessarily even be surprised to see it if there was a fight that needed a huge execute damage based profile. Now, if you have any questions about any of the builds you saw in this video or just Affliction questions in general, uh, feel free to drop them down below in the comment section and I will be sure to get back to you. If you like any weak auras or profiles slash add-ons you saw in this video, uh, they're all indeed available to you guys for free on my Twitch. If you want to swing by and hang out, grab them, ask any questions anytime feel free to do so and i also want to give one final massive shout out again to all my patrons thank you guys a million times for all support i really appreciate it if you're possibly interested in looking at supporting there should be a link somewhere up here as well as down in the video description below with all that being said if you like the video be sure to smash the like button below and hit the sub button right down there as well thanks again dudes and i'll catch you all again soon on stream peace